In this problem, we're being asked to find the domain of this function. So this is a root function, and there really is an invisible two here. So whenever you're looking for the domain of a root function, and you have an even index, the very first step is to take this and set it greater than or equal to zero. So again, whenever you're looking for the domain of a root function, and the index is even, um, you just do this. And there's a couple of ways to do this. I'd like to do it graphically. So let's call this something. Let's call it y. So y equals x cubed minus x. And the question then is, when is y greater than or equal to 0? So for what values of x is this true? So let's graph this function completely by hand with no calculator. Here's how. Notice you can factor this. You can pull out an x, and it becomes x squared minus 1. And that's the difference of squares. So this is x, x minus 1, x plus 1. And so if you were to set this equal to 0 to find the intercepts, you would get 0, you would get 1, and you would get negative 1. Note that the number here, the exponent, is called the multiplicity. All of these have multiplicity 1, which is odd. That means that all of these have the behavior that the function crosses the x-axis at all of these. Remember, um, if it's an even multiplicity, it touches and turns around. Because it's odd, it crosses. Okay, one more piece of information. The end behavior. So this uh, behaves like x cubed whenever x is big because who cares about the x? The graph of x cubed looks like this. So this falls left and rises right. Of course, if you have a calculator, you can avoid all of this. This seems pretty hardcore. I know it is, but it's okay. So check it out. So now let's put our x-intercepts on the graph. So we have 0, 1, and negative 1. And we know it falls left and rises right. So it must look like this. It crosses at negative 1 because we said, we said it crosses. It goes up. How high does it go? We don't know. And it crosses at 0, and it crosses at 1. Okay, now we can answer the original question, which was, when is it greater than or equal to zero, right? So I'm using a different color so you can see. So here and here, okay? And we're including zero, so it'll be uh, negative one to zero, union, and then one to infinity. Beautiful way to find the domain. The other way of doing this, by the way, is to, is to do this and then factor it like this, and then use the test point method where you pick test points and you plug them in, and if it's true, you shade, not true, you don't shade. That's all right. I think doing it graphically is way more elegant. However, it does require some knowledge about zeros, about multiplicities, about crossing, about end behavior, et cetera. So uh, really cool problem. And all we were doing was looking for the domain of this function. So we turned it into a graphical, uh, graphical problem. I hope this video uh, has been helpful. Good luck.